Now we're live now. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. It's all good. That's it. Sup? What's yeah. Up? Sup? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Working on a. What is this? Is it a 2021? 2021, yes. It's 2021 Toyota Camry. Yeah, wow. You finally get it right. I mean, I, I, yeah, I had to. So it's funny. Mm -hmm. I, <sighs> I can't tell you how many comments we get from people that are not regulars that comment on the red cover for the steering wheel. Okay. They'll be like, dude, all this work, and that guy's got that stupid red cover on the steering wheel. And some guy will always chime in and go, um, I believe that Dean and Fernando put that on to protect the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's oh. red so that we don't forget it. <laughs> and sometimes we forget. And sometimes we still forget it. But yeah, it's there to protect the steering wheel. Just like all these red cloths are the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're there mm -hmm. to, you know. They're actually, the company that sells those, those are considered floor mats. But they work reusable covers. They, they're great for just about they everything. floor mats? <laughs> yeah, that's what they, oh, excuse me. Wow, I felt good. What's the specs of the system? Okay, so this one, this one is fun. So they don't make a dash kit for this car. So we're actually custom making a dash kit for it. There's nothing to hear. There's, there's nothing to hear. There's, there's a big hole where the radio would be. Um, so hopefully tomorrow we'll show you what the dash kit looks like. Uh, we're putting an Alpine 509 in the dash. Um, walk around over here. Uh, so this is this is just a big hole and it's got a floating screen radio the difference between this year and the previous years is in the previous years the air conditioner was up here and there was a screen and whatnot now they move the air down they move the big screen up um so yesterday was for me was modifying this area to get our radio to go in um, Fernando was working on the door. This guy's getting the full ground zero treatment. So he's also a super Rockford fan. And let me tell you what, I mean, he's a super Rockford fan. As soon as we said, hey, we can put a radio in it, we can go Rockford. He was like, yes, I want my Rockford. Um, yeah, so um, T2, T2 component. So we got the mid base here, uh, ground zero, full ground zero treatment on the doors. T2 tweeter not there. Where's that? Over there. Oh, it's over there. All right. So we saw the driver's one. So let's go over here. Uh, here we go. So here is the T2 tweeter in the acrylic mount that we made that mirrors the factory mount. So that's the factory. This is ours. Um, I whisper like that. <laughs> uh, so this will be next in there. And what we're doing for amplifiers is the T600.4 and the T150 or 1500.1. This is gonna power the subs. This is just gonna power the front components. That's it. So channel one and two will be tweeters, channel three and four will be mid bass, something like that. And then to direct these two, we're going with a DSR1. And then the radio is just gonna power some rear speakers that he had, so it's not a big deal. But so the ILX 509 will be in the dash we made. Like I said, we'll show you that tomorrow when we when we get that all put back in. Um, so this, so this is a TRD, which is cool because the back seats don't actually fold down in the TRD because they have the strut brace that is in there, which means this piece here goes behind the seats. So we took this out and we remade it in plastic. So as you can see the hole there. And so this is gonna be the amp rack that's gonna bolt in to the strut bar. Cause the strut bar, this, you see these little tiny holes. All these holes are for attaching this to the strut bar. So we'll reuse those holes to reattach our amp to this stamp steel strut bar. And then for um, speakers, he has two CT sounds, eight inch big ones. I don't know. They were tall. They were like eight, nine inches tall. Um, 
Sean, our guy Sean, that makes our boxes for us, made him this as a grill. Uh, wired these up yesterday, two speaker cups, because it's a lot of power. Um, and so that amp rack will sit right here, and then the box will sit in front of it. Um, originally, we were gonna go on the spare tire, but once we figured out the seat didn't fold down, we're like, we're gonna go here, because you'll get to be able to keep your spare tire. And also, with these Rockfords, the heat sinks are across the top here, so when we mount them up, they actually work really well because the heat rises and we'll take advantage of the full heat sink. When in doubt, amp it out. Yeah, this is going to be lots of power. Um, originally, we were just going to do the 1000, but we didn't have it. And so he's like, yeah, just go to the next one up. And we're like, oh, okay. Um, so wiring that up now, T-Spec, two fuse distribution block. We'll go zero gauge into this and then off to each one of these short run out of here and here and then a little bit longer. Uh, passenger side of the car, driver's side of the car, batteries in this area here. So we'll bring the zero gauge up here. We'll bring our signal and speaker wires up around this way. Uh, the DSR-1 won't fit on that. I was gonna originally put it on the back of it and then I was like, eh, I gotta take. So there's a spot right up in here. So I'm gonna make a panel and attach the DSR-1 in this area here. So the, those wires will come up and attach to that. And that will house the DSR-1. So that'll be, the next we're in Clearwater Florida um, so right now we're just getting the tweeter tweeters in because it's gonna be active so what we like to do when we're gonna go active is we run these wires into the dash and so all four of our wires will just be right there for those the radio like I said will do the rear speakers which he hasn't gotten to yet uh, 2020 Honda HRV do you know if it has mics thank you i don't think so i think that's i think that falls into the lower category like civic style and those typically don't have mics so i think you're okay there um you'd be able to look up in the headliner above the back seats if you see any little plastic pieces they don't hide the mics so there'll be a plastic piece in the center above the rear if it has one so if you don't see that, then you're good. If it if you do, then it's probably going to be behind the glove box like all the other ones. Um, I think that's it. I think that's what we got going on. So let's take a closer look at. So you got you got your fast string. Now this bracket we made this out of. Um, Fernando made these out of half inch PVC Sentra um, because they don't make this specific bracket yet so it was just we've made them before so we had a template so we just remade them and he flushed in the bolts so we could reuse the factory bolts um, and then the fast ring just sits on top of it and then lots of um, oh forgot the door panel so this also comes in the kit with the sound treatment the ground zero is all this cool acoustic foam. So this is the inside of the door panel here to reduce all the vibrations and road noise and all those other fun things. So it's a lot of, a lot of little pieces. And the secret to this stuff is it will not stick to itself. It'll initially stick to itself. So like if you put it in and, it, and you, like you try to rub it in, it will stick to it. And if you peel it off, it will rip. However, if you let it sit, it will actually peel off all on its own. So lots of small pieces that don't touch each other is what you end up having to do. So don't, don't try to stick this stuff on top of itself. All right, and your question is, sorry for asking you this again, but uh, I was at work and had to close the video before I got an answer last time, 2011 Dodge Durango with Alpine. What would be the easiest way to add aftermarket amp and sub? Amp Pro, just go pick up an Amp Pro. Uh, if you don't feel like replacing the radio, then go over to pack-audio.com and pick yourself up an Amp Pro. If you want something that will do DSP, then you could pick yourself up a, the iData AR and get either the Arc Audio PSM Pro, which is a DSP, or you can go with the um, DSR-1 from Rockford. Uh, any one of those three scenarios will get you your best output for a Durango since sub pro isn't available right now. 
you know, the, the difference between like price wise between Sub Pro and Amp Pro is only like a hundred bucks. And because the chip shortage is still actually going on, that's why they just kind of mothballed the Sub Pro. Um, it was a cool idea. And in a perfect world, it would be great. Um, when I originally pitched it to them, I thought it would be cool just to have a single RC output that was full range. And they added the low pass crossover to it because they didn't want anyone to just buy it for just the left and right output. Um, so at this point, it probably just get the Ant Pro and even, you know, if you don't add them. So the nice thing about that car with the Sub Pro or the Amp Pro is that it just T harnesses in and gives you RCA, so you can still use the factory amplifier to power all the stuff, which is unique only to the Amp Pro. The other two solutions won't do that. You have to be adding amplifiers to everything. Uh, can you put a new radio in a 2020 Ram yet? Not an amplified system. I think so. 2020 Ram? 2020? Yeah. Isn't that, don't they, don't they have that kit? I think uh, Pack Audio has that I think, kit. I thought yeah. Pack did. I thought Pack did, I thought Metro did. I don't know, all right, so Metro, MetroOnline.com, Pack-Audio.com, and iData. Because I know iData has some stuff, but I don't, I don't know if they have the RAM. I don't know which, that's the Durango kit. Yeah, honestly, I don't know, but those, easy enough to check though. What's up, Haley? Uh, will allow me to bypass factory presets for the factory sub. So if you do an amp pro, like I said, it's keeping the factory amplifier in there. So it will only allow you, it, it just works the way it does now. It just adds the preamp section to it. So it's stripping the signal off of that and keeping the vo variable voltage. If you go with a DSR1 solution or the AR with the PS PSM Pro, then you can reprogram the radio via AR to do whatever you want. So if you want silver volume control and you want, uh, for that, you want punch base, for that, you want presets for DSP, but you have to add full amplifiers because you are taking out the factory amplifier. Oh, I waved at Timmy. Hi, Timmy. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean, that's 2020. Yeah? What do you got for 2020? They have, um... They have kits? 2019-2021 Ram Classic. If it's a classic. Yeah. Yeah, it might just be the classic. That's yeah. classic. Freno, don't forget to send me pictures of the lab trunk. Yes. Yes, I have to send it to you. Yes. Yeah, come on, man. Step it up. I know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mm, fart. Woo, that was good. A little juicy. But that's what we got going in the bay today. Other things that are happening here, um, we managed to do, <laughs> we actually had an accident today, which was, was kind of sucked. Um, we were testing an amplifier for a manufacturer and we managed to blow up, not the amplifier, thank God, but we blew up all our Astron power supplies. Not one. Not one, not two, four. Four Astron power supplies lit this install bay up like a freaking smoke machine at a rock concert. It was, <laughs> when Fernando was actually gone when it happened, he came back, he's like, what the hell? I was like, I don't know, man. So that's fun. That was an expensive loss today. So mine is a no fifth wow. gen new body style. Probably not then, probably not. No. Ah, oh, what's up from Iowa? Hey. Uh, and that's your tech tip of the day. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. blow your astrons. Don't blow up your astrons, yeah, it's expensive. Good. Oh, damn. Yeah, it really sucks. Yeah, and it was crazy, too, because this filled the whole place up with smoke. So That was bad. Yeah, Fernando's like, what happened? And I'm like, yeah, we lost all our astrons today. I wanted to spend more money on other things. I mean, I didn't blow any of the fuses. Didn't do anything like that. Didn't trip a breaker. Just lit them up, which can be expected. And that's, there again, why fuses suck, because they don't actually work it's half the time. Bay, it's on fire. What happens when the flux capacitor isn't fluxing? Exactly. Exactly. You just don't go anywhere. You get no. You get no nothing. You get no nothing. You get just no kinda, nothing. Get no nothing. It just kind of sucks. Yeah. You might need to put some sticky tape on this one. It keeps. I'm telling you. I know. I'm telling you. I know. Hey. I know. Well, you know? order the other ones. I. Uh, hello. Can you send me like... Dude, you literally can type it in. Where? In the account. 
get the you want to get the clear ones the um or not the clear ones but the rubber ones just get the rubber oh, ones yeah, but those are thicker. The other ones would be too shallow. You'd have to stack two on top. You use one strip. Nah, it's not going to work, though, because you'll still have a gap. Mm. I don't mm -hmm. know. But anyways. Uh, no, nah, it wasn't. It had nothing to do with the amp. The amp actually still worked. We were able to still dyno it because we have the two, power, uh, two regular batteries, and we just used our snap-on to charge up the batteries and keep everything going. So luckily we were able to get the contract done, but it still sucked. Get contract done? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that would Yeah, it's contract work, man. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, well, there you go. Those everyone was happy. The They're not, yeah, me. Yeah, I'll be paying for those. Oh. What else is new? Uh, is there a way to find out if you have a bad alternator, uh, having whining noise, how now didn't have when I installed it? Uh, so you need someone that can read the output of the alternator with an oscilloscope. You have to scope the alternator. Um, I've never done it personally, so I don't know how or what you're looking for, but you might be able to find someone here on the interwebs that will show you how to use an oscilloscope to test your alternator. Uh, what you're testing for is uh, AC current that is bleeding out of the alternator, like a rectifier or a diode when pad. Um, yeah. Yeah, Tashi Station for power converters. Or should I try Amazon? Definitely try Amazon. Um, it's probably got a bad motivator. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to find a. Okay, yep. Okay, got that one. Love all the Star Wars references. Yeah. Yeah, that would be cool. It's, it definitely has a bad motivator. Yeah, because it's. Uh, yeah, it's not motivated to do anything anymore. It's all done. The uh, power supplies. They, they've, uh, oh, no, I think they motivate you. To buy something different? To buy a new different, yeah. Yeah, just what I wanted right. to do. Yeah. Really. Now, if you actually want to buy something different, you can buy this 8-inch Morel. It's an 8-inch? It yes, it's an 8-inch. It's eight an 8-inch inch Morel. It's beautiful because it it's beautiful. You have to go and check them out. I was going to say, they can't buy them yet. But when they're available, you have to buy it. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you don't have a car. Just buy it because it's really cool. MorelHiFi.com. You can check the pictures and everything. Uh, I was going to say, Morel has sound treatment if you guys didn't know that. Oh, it's really it's, nice. That's what I want. I want the straps from so. Uh What system would you... What system would Luke have in his X-Wing? Ah, he probably would, man. He's one of those hipster guys that wouldn't be like, oh, the factory's good. Um, use a voltmeter on AC if you have 0.5 of a volt AC does not or no need replace alternator. Ah, El Fernandez. There you go, he knows. He is a mechanic. He knows. Uh, use a voltmeter on AC and okay. if you have 0.5 of a Point, so half a volt AC. Uh, you don't need to replace the alternator. Or no need replace alternator. No, it says replace alternator. So. Oh, we need it. Or we don't need. It? I don't know. It, it, was, it wasn't the best. I think he's talking to the phone. Uh, work just scheduled a conference call for 9 a.m. Friday morning. Not happy camper. That's news time. Ah, oh, that sucks. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, what would Darth have on his TIE fighter? I would say a complete arc audio. I mean, Brian would be happy. I mean, being the big Star Wars fan that he is. I mean, he's a... Mitchell is a big Star Wars nerd. I think more so than I am. I mean, when we were at Orlando, we all went to downtown Disney and we went to the Star Wars store first and only went to the store because the dogs were like, we've had enough! Um, and the only thing we bought was this giant doghouse that was a Star Wars doghouse. Uh, we are both working on Toyota. Yeah. It's a Toyota day. I uh, hope your day is cooler than mine. No. Dialed's no good. Yes. Yeah. There you go. I the, mean, your day is pretty cool. My day is pretty cool? Honest, like, you just blow up four astronauts. That's not cool. That's <laughs> really that's, that's awesome. expensive as shit. Right. You know? No, that's that's not cool. Who are you gonna call? 
um, El Fernandez. Just don't call Dean because he's gonna blow you Astros. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Kick me right in the Astro. It's a Toyota Thon. Is it Toyota? Oh, I like that one. That's well, that's the sale they always have. Toyota Thon. Toyota Thon. Yeah. I don't know, man. I never buy a car. Today's Tuesday, right? A new car before. Yeah. So yeah. today's Tuesday. Um, nothing really exciting other than we're just trying to get this car done um, for tomorrow. So I should probably get back to work. Uh, Tuesday, have replaced Sucky Mondays. <laughs> yeah, with Sucky Tuesdays. I mean, it's just the same thing. It's not all yes. that exciting. But All right, guys, listen. Nothing much going on here that, you know, tomorrow we'll come back on. We'll show you what this looks like with all the door panels on. We'll show you what it looks like with the Alpine 509 in the dash. Yeah. So definitely come back and check it on. Uh, check it out. Uh, hopefully by then I'll have the amp, amp rack in the back. We can see what that looks like. And we'll, we'll go from there. That's all we got. Head over to Merle, head over Merle Merle Hi -Fi. com to uh, just look at some cool stuff. And that's what we got. Um, all right, guys. You guys have a great rest of your day. See ya. You chimping? Mm-hmm. So weird mounting amplifiers there. How do you mount them? Not to the back seat, that's for sure. It looks like. I know. What's up, Mel? MM Matt's Mel. It almost rhymes. Too many M's. Triple M. Three squared. Three cubed. It's cubed. Yeah, pretty. All right. So, actually, you know, it's pretty funny. Like, looking at it now, how this TRD mat has the red line in it with the red on the power wire. That looks really cool. So this is a TRD Toyota Camry. We talked about it yesterday. What that means is that this seat doesn't fold down. It doesn't have the cool 60-40, 40-40, whatever it is, 50-50, because it has this metal brace here, which is like a strut tower or strut brace. Um cool thing that all the honda guys want to have in the backs of their civics it comes with this so there's it's bolted in six places um because it's got racing wheels it's it's a it's, it's a trd what that meant for us is that we didn't have to mount the amplifiers in the spare tire up on there we could do an old school back trunk area here and because they're the power series rockfords the heat sinks are across the tops, so heat rising will actually work great with these amplifiers because this is plastic on the top, so that's really awesome there. But what that allowed us to do is the amp rack is bolted to this. Uh, so there's one screw that goes in here because that was a factory push pin, and then there was a bunch of push pins that pushed into this. So we use those, which you can see like right here and right here and we put plastic threaded certs into this piece which is made out of a eighth inch piece on the back and a half inch piece on the front so it's it's pretty deep and that allowed us for one the factory let me show you the piece of carpet from the factory so you can kind of get an idea what we were trying to copy so the factory has this lip like this so we used an eighth inch piece cut to that shape and then the half inch piece was cut to this shape. So that top piece was this, and then it had these four holes, uh, five holes, I should say. And so we came from the backside and where are they at? Hold on, I gotta find them here. These, we put these into the plastic. This is an M5 screw. So these Allen key twist in, use a quarter inch uh, drill bit. These will go right into the plastic. And that allowed us to mount the amp rack directly to that metal structure in the back of the car. So these bolts, these nuts all hold this into place. So we built it on the bench that you saw yesterday and then it all just screws in. So you put that screw in first. This is obviously out of the car then you bring it into the car screw it in and then line up the four holes screw it all in so that amp rack is this this guy which is freaking cool but it gives it that old school look 
got some Rockford amps and that'll be awesome. Now that's gonna power, it's a T1500.1, it's gonna power these two CT uh, eight inch subs here. Uh, our buddy Big Red, Sean, made the box. And then we have a set of T2 six and a half components up front that's gonna power off of that T600.4. And this is a 2021 Camry, so they don't make a dash kit for this car, which sucks. So we are like, no, no. We need a new radio because it's a Toyota and Toyotas typically just sound like crap. And so we made this bracket, this piece here. So this uses, this is the full Alpine. Alpine on the back side of this is a regular single din chassis. And so we modified the existing brackets from the factory to attach to the side of our Alpine, screwed into place. And then we remade this whole piece. As you can see, it all contours to the Alpine piece that comes out of there. And so now he's got, which he was super excited because he's like, oh, can I do an Alpine? I was like, yes, actually, that's what you're going to have to do. So we have the Alpine big screen. You could have done, this is the 509, probably could have done the 511 um, easily because it's, that yeah, would have fit, but um, I just was thinking 509. So, cause that's what we did in the CHR, basically did the same style install in the CHR. Uh, integration wise, this uses iData. So iData works perfectly with this, retains the backup camera, steering wheel controls, all the gauges, all the fun stuff. So the only thing missing was plastic, which was cool. Cause with the laser pew pew, we were able to make this. And of course it's black acrylic. So it matches and gives it that whole mirror finish look and looks like the factory. So that just sits there like that and looks all cool. Um, big pain in the butt. It's uh, actually three pieces of acrylic to get this. There's a quarter inch piece on the front and then two eighth inch pieces that are attached. So the three all get attached. Uh, different configurations on all of them because there was pieces that needed to do different things so that this all snapped back into place. And when it snapped all back into place, it held this piece of acrylic into place which is really cool how it all just kind of goes back together freaking lasers yep for sure so uh, now we have the 509 to control this so the 509 is going to power his rear speakers because he's like i don't really care about the rear speakers he had a set that we just put in to put in um but uh sound treatment which we showed you yesterday fast rings tweeters up in the dash you can you can even see you can see the tweeter yeah ah, there you go you can see the tweeter right there yeah that's pretty cool i use the um rocker gives you two covers for the tweeters and i use the shinier one just because i knew you'd be able to see through the grill and he's like super stoked about rockford so that would be cool uh can you sell your dash kits team um yes i mean it's, it's, yeah we could probably so this one you didn't so the, uh, so the hardest part about this one is getting the radio to fit into the brackets because in order, like the, the plastic parts are no big deal. Like, uh, yeah, we could sell you three pieces of acrylic that you stack and tape together. The hardest part is modifying the factory brackets in order to get this to do what we did. So you have to modify the factory brackets and you have to modify the Alpine cage. Uh, which is the hardest part because if any of you guys have put in single pins, you know, it has that one small hole for some reason that is there for pins to inset into when you're using the factory metal brackets. Um, so you actually have to tap that as an M5, which is not fun. So you have to have a, you know, a tap set. Uh, and what I did was is I taped a vacuum to the radio so that uh, as I was doing that, all the, the very few shavings we're going into my vacuum. It was very stressful. And then you have to cut the factory bracket, hammer it flat and drill a second hole. So like uh, it's doable, but we didn't film it either. Cause I didn't know how the hell I was going to do it. Um, it's repeatable for sure, but um, definitely a pain in the butt. Definitely a pain in the butt. So that was, what's up Fernando? What's up? So definitely not a, uh, it's not, see, that's the problem is like, like some of the stuff we'd love to sell, but there's always these extra things you have to do to get it to work that 
uh, you know, it's like the grill, like putting like logos on the doors. That's you need a thermal uh, plastic stapler in order to get that to work properly. And it's just like, yeah, I don't, I don't have one of those laying around. So, you know, it's not easy. Yeah, I was there and I saw it. Dean loves custom dash kit builds. Oh, I do. They're so much fun. I gotta be honest with you, they're not as bad as, I, they still take forever, don't get me wrong, they still take forever. But it's not as bad as like back in the 90s when you had to do them, those sucked, cause back then we were making them out of wood and you were sanding the shit out of them and then you were either painting them or covering, I used to cover mine in vinyl. Out of um, wood, really? Yeah, you'd have to make them out of, what else are you gonna make them out of? Just the back strap, done bro. You gotta cover the front. Oh, you're still using backstrap, but you know, it's, it just wasn't. Um, but the Toyotas, I actually don't mind because they, they're all basically the same. So like CHR is the same as this, um, and which was weird because I couldn't figure out where I, I lost the information I had for the CHR because I was like, oh, this would be easy. It's probably the same exact radio as the CHR, but I don't know where the hell it went. Uh, still better than that Lexus convertible, right? Uh, that'd be the SC430, and those suck balls. No, you can keep those cars. You can keep all those cars. Um, uh, so those are definitely no fun. Um, steering wheel controls work as expected. Everything in this is good. Oh, since Fernando's out of the trunk, so let me turn this. We got lights back here. All right, so let's take a closer look at the trunk. Um, hang on. Let me turn on the day. No, I, I got a light. I have the daytime sun. All right, so here's here's what we got. Here's a closer look. Um, we're using the uh, T-Spec 2 distribution block. Um, and the reason why we're using just the power distribution block is because, and we often tell you guys to look for these things, right over here in the back side, just so happen to be two factory fuse points. I'm sorry, two factory ground points, my bad. And uh, so we took those off, sanded the paint behind them, and there we go. We have the uh, amplifiers kind of right there to the factory bolts, which is really cool. And then yesterday I talked about adding the DSR-1. And so the DSR-1 is mounted up behind this carpet here. So if I pull that down, kind of get an idea. We had to put in two nut certs, bolts into place. Um, so it's hidden up out of the way, but uh, power wires going on this side, signal wires going on this side. Uh, so we actually only have a, a four channel going up because the DSR-1 only has four channels of input. So channels one and two are front, channels three and four are sub. That's a configuration you can do in the DSR-1. And then up this side of the car is the zero gauge and the base knob. Um, and then Fernando mounted the fuse holder here, added two nut certs. Uh, made this cool mount zero gauge so you got to take up some room to do zero gauge um, so these two screws will come out and you can get your uh, get your fuse holder off to get your battery serviced if you need to so two screws and then this will just come over here to the side and you're all set um, so that's that's that and then of course you know anytime you, you got to make sure that this will close that's that's key there um, now coming back to the amplifiers so well you guys always talk about like pro tips and stuff like that um something to think about when laying out your amplifiers so this is the sub amp this is the 1500.1 and this is the 604. the reason why the 604 is here is because all my rcas and speaker wires are going to run out this side of the car I don't want those passing in front of this amplifier. That makes no sense. Plus, this is my big sub amp that's gonna draw the most amperage. So I want that power wire here to be the shorter run because this is gonna draw about half the amount of current that the big guy is gonna pull. So when laying your amplifiers out, this is something you have to think about. So that zero gauge comes right into here, boom, into this amp first, into this amp second. And the only thing I have to run over here is an RCA. This little, you can see by the blue, that's your remote turn on. But everything else where, you know, this is all over here. So are the RCAs, all the speaker wires, they come this way and go upside the car or come up and go into the DSR-1 that's hiding behind here so that we can keep some separation here, which is, you know, it, it seems simple. 
and it is, but it's one of those things you have to think about when doing amplifier layout. I always put my sub amp on the side that my power wire is coming into so that it is the shorter run into the amplifier. I know, it's just crazy, right? Insanity. Um, but that's, so that's what's going on as far as that goes. Um, this is a lot of power. Uh, 604 is, is a ton of power. So those T2s, we haven't heard it yet. Uh, all we did was open up the software for the DSR-1 and put in the crossover points and set it up so that these would play because out of the box it's set up for front and rear input so it doesn't know how to play these and it plays those full range which we don't want so that was the first thing we did was set that set that up uh you and fernando make it seem easy okay hey, it's not <laughs> because you know we're still spending time on this but yeah 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 it's a lot of time it's, it's a, lot a lot of time. time but thank you man yeah thank you uh after info speaking of making it look easy uh, we're going to put up our little ad that we shot earlier today, but... Um, put it on? Yeah, put it on. August 24th. August yes. 24th. Thursday, August 24th. Yes. Noon until like 4? Something Two like that? Until like, you Noon know, until... the beers and the food runs out. Yeah. <laughs> if you're in Dallas, Texas, or anywhere near the Dallas, Texas area, yes. on the 24th of August, that's a Thursday, we are going to be at Jay's Tent. Fernando, myself, Brian Mitchell, Andy Waymeyer, Jacob Waymeyer, Jeff Smith, Brian Mitchell. Did I already say him? Yeah, you said it's, He's worth saying twice. It's, it's, it's twice. Uh, so far, I think MN Matt's Mel is going to be there. Um, Phantom Chris is going to be there. Um, and those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. So yes, it's, it's going to be a lot. It's going to be food, the food is going to be there. Drinks. The drink is going to be there. It's Demo going to be. Cars. Demo cars, lots of demo cars. It's gonna be awesome. So if you're if you're in that area, it's worth getting off work mm -hmm. uh, and coming out to Jay's tent just to hang out, meet Oscar, um, tell him how silly he looks with his sunglasses on. Although with as hot as it's been in Dallas, I will have he sunglasses on yeah, too. Yeah, sure. So <sighs> I won't be there. Hey, you're missing out, bro. You're what? Missing that out. sucks. It sucks. Even yeah. if you even if he's a competitor, you should still be there because. It's going to be the best. We're going to have lots of fun. We did it last year, but we didn't talk too much about it. Um, but we had a great time. Yes. We had an amazing time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Dallas, so, Texas. Jay's tent. 24th. Yes. Can't wait. Uh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Um, but on another note, if yes. you're if you're going to be at Knowledge Fest, which is the 25th, the next day. Ooh, it's more party, yeah. Yeah. Um, we will be teaching classes on Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be doing a cool, uh, on the show floor, we'll do modern wire techniques both Saturday and Sunday. And then Sunday morning at nine o'clock, <laughs> we'll be doing a social media class, which personally is one of the funnest classes we teach. Uh, this will be the last time we teach it, I think forever. So if you're in the area, it's definitely worth, uh, if you're in the industry and you can come to Knowledge Fest, it's definitely worth coming to because we we lay a lot on you and we have a lot of fun doing it it's it's a good time uh, like i said it's one of my personal favorite classes so but i'll be happy just to not do it anymore so it'll be it'll be a lot of good yeah no sleep yeah first first part no sleep hashtag uh will those tweeters you put in the dash work on the dash of a forerunner or are they a different size no so we have to make uh a, it's, so the, the well in the forerunner i think it's a two and a half which is fine they'll still fit well, it's same thing as this one yes. yeah it's still yeah. yes it's the toyota's all yeah, used basically the same roughly the same but the tweeter is actually pretty small because this has a uh two and a half or three inch in the dash that comes out we put those big ass tweeters up there um so it has like this size right here in the dash toyota makes like 10 different versions of the speaker for some stupid reason um, but the drivers themselves are typically the same size, so yeah, we'll fit. Yeah, you shouldn't have any problem. Dean, if you said, what's up, speaker boys, it would mean a lot, brother. What's up, speaker boys? Is that good? Um, anyone, scheduled, anyone scheduled for rear seat entertainment soon? Yes. Really? Yes. What? Yes. What are you talking about? I have no idea. That's insane. Dude, we haven't put a freaking <laughs> overhead. I see your face. I'm like, you're like, turn around. Like, yeah, I'm like, what? It, it ain't no one. Dude, we haven't put a rear, uh, a rear seat entertainment in a car in like forever. 
Um, and I got to be honest with you, I try to talk people out of it if I get the opportunity. I'm like, dude, just go out and buy some some tablets for God's sakes. I mean, some tablets. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, the kind painkillers or something. Um, it, honestly, Rooster Teeth Entertainment makes absolutely no sense to me. And this, like, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. None. But whatever works for you. Um, y'all the last one? I hope not. Uh, why is the last... I have no idea. Uh, what are... Oh, why is it the last class we're teaching? Okay, I got it. I mean, um, the last class. So it won't be the last it's class the we're last teaching. It'll probably be the last time what we teach... Here? Well, no, it'll be definitely the last one for this, but so, all right, so here's what it is. We've done social media trainings. Uh, we've done photography. We've done video. We've pretty much covered everything that we, we can possibly do for the last five years. Um, we used to, have, it started with a class we used to call the digital business card, which is helping companies understand how to make video. And we walk you through the process of video editing, give you topics that you should make videos on. Basically everything you need to do to make a store more profitable, better, and get more customers. Um, and we did that for two and a half years, almost three years. And then we switched that to snapshots to great shots because we figured out that people need to understand how to take pictures because some of the pictures really suck. So um, we did a class for like a year and a half where we taught people how to use their phones in order to take better pictures. You know, like when you see Fernando in the back of the car framing throughout the whole time I'm talking on the phone. Um, yeah, I created a monster. So we would teach people how the difference between a snapshot and a great shot. And so this year we actually planned on doing no classes at all for that. We were just gonna do modern wire techniques on the show floor and that was it. But um, there was still a hole in the schedule where that wasn't being taught. And so we were like, hey, you know, we'll come back and we'll teach this class. Um, but I think after this year, I, I really, it, it's not as fun teaching the class as it used to be. We have fun doing it, but, uh, and everyone, you know, they're all, ah, you know, we have a good time. When we, when we teach a class at nine o'clock in the morning, man, we know how hard it is for people. Uh, because if I was in the audience, I'd fall asleep. So, um, it's, it's definitely a, a thing to be held, but we just, I don't know. I'm kind of, I feel like we could move on to something better. So it's really just what it comes down to. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but I, you know, personally myself, I don't think I want to teach the class anymore. You know? But that's why. That's why it'll be the last one. Um, but you never know. You never know. Uh, what are you looking for when setting active crossovers on an amp as far as crossover points? Um, so the amplifier, if you're going active, that means that you're going to have channels that are going to power tweeters, channels that are going to power mid-range, possibly power mid-bass. To go active, you need to be able to have the crossover points in the amplifier that it can do those sort of things. So, for example, like uh, these tweeters are crossed over at 3,500 hertz. Uh, in an amplifier, I need an amplifier that can do that. Usually that's called a 10-time multiplier switch, meaning there's a button on the side of the amplifier that will take and multiply the frequency times 10. So if I put it at 350, hit it, automatically it's going to go up to, you know, 3,500. All right, now that will cross that tweeter over. And for the mid-range, I need something that can do a band pass, meaning whatever I just crossed that tweeter over at, I need it to play stop there and then go the other way. So let's say if it's a mid-range, somewhere in that 350 to 500 range, depending on what I'm trying to do. Um, and then the mid-bass is the same way. I need another band pass there that stops where the mid-range is. So there's there's not a lot of amplifiers that, that do that. There are some, so like right off the top of my head, all the new Sony ES do that. Uh, the Kicker KS amplifiers used to do that. The Marine versions, the KSA or whatever they're called do that. Um, anything with a DSP in it will do it. And that's why we also have the DSR1 in the back corner because that is taking and doing that for us, which I can open up my iPad or a laptop and I can type that number in and not worry about the amplifier. So I, in that case, I just need a dumb amplifier. I mean, I don't need it to have a crossover or anything like that. So like when you look at like the new Morel uh, 45th anniversary limited edition amplifiers that they make that are dual mono design stereo amplifiers that has a left gain and a right gain and it's left and right power. There are no crossovers in them whatsoever because they're just like, why? We don't want to run anything else through the signal. So it's signal in, signal out, and as little between start point one to point two to keep good quality sound. 
let the DSP do that because in most cases that's what's going to happen anyway. So they've just taken that whole section out of the amplifier. And in the end of the day, that's what they want. You know, they want so you you can pick your own DSP and uh, and grab those amplifiers because those amplifiers are A B. You want a nice oh they're A B huh? signal. So oh, sexy. Oh, so sexy is MorelHiFi.com. You can find an A B class amplifier. Amazing, and you don't want to go crazy. Go with the other ones, right? Um, the MPH, the MPA, MH, whatever. I, I can never get it right. <laughs> yeah, amplifiers, man. Go check them out. MorelHiFi.com. You want to see the pictures here? Morel underscore America. Amazing pictures. Natasha does amazing giveaways and all that stuff. So check them out here on Instagram. Um, Morel all the way, right? All the way. Uh, someone's asking, website for yellow wire caps you use. We buy those from either Metro or Amp Global. Um, that means if you want to get those, if you're a dealer, you can go to your Metro or Amp Global guys. If you're not, you should be able to go to any retailer that is a Metro or an Amp Global and buy them from them. But uh, as far as like randomly buying online, I haven't had a lot of success in doing that. Um, most people don't even know they exist, so it's kind of, kind of, kind of weird. I'm obsessed with it, Dean. It's okay. Hola. Uh, any input on Brazilian DSP, specifically the Stepsum or Timpano? Timpano, man. Come on. Sorry, I'm not from Brazil. <laughs> um, not really. I, I, it's. I want one. I want one really bad, but I haven't. I just haven't got around to getting one because I know I just I have so much other stuff to look at. A lot of them are neat because you don't require a laptop, which is smart because a lot of the places those are being sold, they're not going to have laptops. So you can just touch buttons on the top. Um, as far as bill quality and stuff like that go, let's be honest. Okay, you're going to get what you pay for in anything you buy. Uh, you know, the DSR-1 is, is, is a great DSP. Is it the best DSP? No. Um, there's always a difference between a thousand dollar DSP and a three hundred dollar DSP, but there again, if everything checks out in line with what you're trying to do, I go for it. If you wanna get your hands into the DSP world and trying to figure it out, that's great, and then you can move out to something better. Always. I'm a firm believer in buy it once, buy it for life. No, but like, dude, I don't have, I don't have. I get it. Thousand bucks. No, I DSP. listen, listen. I totally understand. I have three hundred dollars. And, and and I'm that guy. When, when I was when I was you know way back when in the good old days of car audio when I used to be in high school and yeah. worked at the fast food restaurant for three fifteen an hour. I totally get it, man. Yeah. I was buying stupid. You know, like, oh, I got, I got an extra 150 bucks. Let's buy this. If and then, gonna, my point is, if that's gonna get you the flavor of the DSP, and it's like, oh, it's totally. This, oh no, no, no. Listen, I understand. I understand. I, I was the same way. I did that, and I've said it time and time before. Whatever it takes to get you into car audio. Yes. Okay, because yes. you're gonna buy it, you're gonna experience it, now, you're gonna grow past it, and you're gonna only be. Thing what is, is don't next? Don't settle. Right. Never. If you, you're okay, like, oh, this is the. Well, yeah, and I think that's part of the problem. Somebody will buy something. something yeah, because somebody will buy something mediocre, and then they'll say yeah. it's the best. And it's like, no, that was the best for you, but it's not the best. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. but that, that takes us down a whole nother road. Uh, do amps really fall apart when mounting on a sub box? Yes, yes, more so now than before. I mean, I just, yeah, they do. Um, if you're going to have to mount it to a sub box, try to find an amplifier that's conformal coated. Because when they conform will coat the board, they add an epoxy over the top of the board, and that locks all those pieces into place. So, like when you look at like marine amplifiers, they're conformal coated because they're going to be in a boat, and the boat is doing this: boom, 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 boom. And so the subwoofer is the least of their problems. It's smacking the water countlessly that's going to do it. So it's not that you can't do it; it's just you shouldn't do it with a conventional amplifier. If you can find one that's conformal coated, all day long, go for it. Now you don't. The, the trick is just add a gap, like add a gap off of, so don't mount it directly to the box, put a gap, you know, add a second piece of wood, you know, and, and just get it off of the box. Hola, Nando. Hey, what's up? Hi guys, have you heard of 
No. I'm just going to go with no. I can't even pronounce it, but no. I haven't heard of this. Um, cool. Uh, hello from Coral Springs. What's up? Is my quarter still as good as they used to be? I have no idea. Uh, nice ad placement. He does good. Um, all right, so somebody answered that. Fernando, the full baked potato man, the doorman. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, what size braided loom for zero gauge? Three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. Sure. That's, yeah, nice and loose. Uh, where do you get your red braided loom? Uh, Electra Duck. So there's a website that's called Electra Duck, and it has like Duck Dodgers as the um, logo. So it's a it's a duck in a spacesuit, um, and they're the same people that supply Amazon with all of theirs. It's just direct from them. There's no one to call. You just go to their website. It's like 1990s internet stuff, but they got really good prices um, if you're just buying small quantities because they sell it in like bulk. Like they sell bulk, and but they sell it in smaller increments. That's kind of reasonable. That's why we buy a ton of it. DS1 versus Dayton DSP. Not even a competition. The DSR1 will smack the out of the Dayton. The Dayton... Listen, the Dayton sucks, okay? But the DSR1, way better DSP. Uh, any plans review? All right. Any plans review any Museway product? Just played with the DSP software and seems very easy to use. Amps also look solid. Actually, funny you should ask. I'm supposedly we have a couple test units coming here. Um, I don't know when they're going to show up, but probably. I mean, if they show up, yes. Uh, DSR1 for the win. Christian says, I just dealt with a gun customer. I understand how you guys feel when the customer wants Moscone Pro 830 for 279 versus a compatible product. Yeah. Yeah, fun customers. Uh, what DSP is in the 600 range would you recommend? Depends on how many channels you need. Because most of the, like, 6 to 8s or 4 to 8s are all in that $600 range. Um, so you have a, a, you know, like the audio control 608, you have the Helix, what is it, it's a mini? Helix mini. Helix yeah. mini Mark II or something yeah. like that. That's DSR a four to six. DSR1 is cheap. I mean, I, I would try to push up against that. Um, have, I'm sure uh, there's a Gladen that's close zero, to that. Um, six to eight. You have... Yeah, it's, it's, no, I'm not going with that one. With the ground um, zero one? Yeah, no. Why? Uh, it's it's old. There's so many newer ones out. No, no, no. Oh, you get a tweak. Jail I tweak. I mean, yeah. Dog dogs and just 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 get like I think like third place on competitive. I don't Stop. think he has the six to eight. I it think has, he has. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. How's that one? Um. You can mount it. All right. So here, Christian. Christian's. Yeah, Christian's talking about adding a layer. Okay. Cool. What's up, Christian? Uh, the, the Atomo is like 600 bucks. Is it? Uh, that's what Christian says. There you he's, go. He's a, he's a number guy. So there are plenty of DSPs for a $600 yeah, range. Sure. Here, here again, I'm going to keep saying it until the cows come home. doesn't matter about the DSP. You have to understand the software. So if you see one you like, go download the software, see if you can figure it out. If you can't figure it out, move on to the next one because... That's the hardest part. Oh, you're is, not trying that hard. <laughs> is is wrapping your head around what the software is trying to do. So yeah, that, that's where you're at. How many you actually need? Uh, is it bad to mix amp brands in an active build? That seems to be a real popular question. So we asked that Saturday, Monday. You should, you should talk about that. What? what <laughs> you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you seem so no, official no, on, on that Thursday. one. I'm, oh, yeah, that's a good topic for Hi-Fi and I to talk about on Thursday. The, the the easy answer to that is technically no, it's not, but it just depends what you're trying to do. Um, What's the goal? Yeah. Uh, do they ship to Barbados? I have no clue. Is MB Quartz as good as they used to be? MB Quartz is owned by a different company than it used to be owned by, um, and it is not made in the it's different owners okay um the former owners of mb quartz is uh german maestro so if you want classic mb quartz look at german maestro because that's the old mb court it's made the same factory same people um but the current mb quartz are, are not 
the, but I will say this, the MB Court did come out with a German edition this year. It uh, comes with, like, some headphones and stuff, and they're made in Germany by unofficially and not uh, the same people. The people that used to make it. Tweak is nice. Tweak is nice. Uh, Dean's right. It depends on how many channels you need. Like, yes. Dean's yes, Christian. Lying. Dean is not always right. Yeah, I'm married. I'm definitely nice. never right. I have, I have Haley and Sue to remind me constantly of how often I am wrong. Uh, but speaking of wrong, it really doesn't matter. Today is Wednesday. The Toyota, we're getting ready to tune this. This was just a little break to give ourselves just a little breathing room. Uh, we're going to whip out the DSR-1 it's, uh, software on the iPad. And we're going to sit back. We're going to tune this thing up, get it sounding sexy. Sit back and relax. So we can get this on and get out and get to the next one. The one thing I didn't show you guys is the base knob. Uh, if you have one of these little Camrys, a uh, little base knob just fits real nice right there. Um, I will say that if you want to mount it there, you do have to take that whole dash part to get to it. So, what's up, Jeff? Hey, Jeff, look yes. at this Camry. Ooh, new Camry, floating screen, custom dash kit. Yay. Yeah. Um, sexy, sexy. All right, guys. Thank you. Have a happy hump day. We missed Mike, Mike, Mike. Uh, you guys have fun. Oh, hey, by the way. Hey, Camry, yay. Uh, if you're interested in knowing the difference between AccuBase and Epicenter, Fernando had us make a cool video that explains the difference visually, not just me talking, visually shows the difference between AccuBase, Epicenter, why you might need both, why you might need one, but head over to YouTube, watch the video today, and you'll be like, damn. Send it to whoever needs to be sent so they can see it. But anyways, yeah, if you're having that argument with somebody about AccuBase, and they're like, I got AccuBase. I don't need that. Just watch that video. Say, shut up and watch this. All right, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Sure, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fernando. Hey, man. What's going on? Ah, uh, not much, man. So, today was an interesting day. Yeah. Um, we had a cancellation. Yeah. Um, which sucked, because that was the weirdest cancellation ever. Yeah. The guy showed up and was like, I have to move today. And we're like, why did you drive all the way here? You could have just told us on the phone. Right. But that's neither here nor there. So we ended up having a, a obviously we have a backup, because we have a backlog of cars to get to. And what's up, Clint? Uh, yeah, and so we ended up working on a ProMaster van outside all day. Yes. Which, you know, from your shirt, you can see the sweat. So oh. it, was, it was rather hot. Yeah, it was. Then we had a visitor today from Australia. Yes. So Steve we had... Australia, man. Yeah, so we had the uh, Amp, Amp uh, Ray at Amp brought over uh, the counterpart in Australia. Mm -hmm. So we got to meet him and hang out. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. And then the best news of the day best news of the day do you know what the best news of the day was no what was it oh yes of course what was the best news of the day <laughs> that you don't blow out all the four uh power oh, supplies. yeah so uh, earlier in the week if you chimed in we had said that we blew up all four the we excuse me that we yeah it was you um <laughs> we blew up all four of these power supplies as it turned out we actually didn't blow any of them up um what happened was is the power cable actually went bad and so <laughs> it's the weirdest thing you can see where the oscillation occurred so it blew out a little hole here blew out a little it almost looks like an air hose how it it shorted out it was just, i've never seen anything like this before um but here was the original problem right here uh but no it ended up just burning up this cord and there was one little ground wire inside of the one that this was connected to because this is a short to ground and so we replaced the ground wire and then I just ordered all new cables, a brand new power strips. So we're gonna redesign that whole section. At some point we'll actually get this to where it's the way I want it. And then probably not, we'll tear it all apart because we still have two more power supplies sitting right there that we really yeah. need to add to this. So uh, power cables are definitely cheaper. Yeah, so a new power strip and cables is like 120 bucks. So I'm pretty, pretty happy as opposed to the two grand I was gonna have to spend to buy new power supplies that would have that would have really sucked i mean i'm still like 
you know, let's go for the new power supply. Let's, let's not go for the new I, I have other things I'd like to spend money on. Uh, I spy an LC5 and 7 Pro. Yeah. Still in the wrappers. Yeah, these came in... Uh, last week. Last week. So these came in last week. And... Um, so yeah, there's new outs. So we're gonna review these. Probably we'll start the review on these next week. Um, start filming anyways, because we want to. We need to explain how these work. That's for sure. And now that everyone knows how to use AccuBase, um, how do you use AccuBase? Yeah, watch the video. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It's a video. Uh, do you only install or sell also? So. The five star retail side, this is the install bay. There's a retail side of things that is located two doors down from us. And yes, he sells everything. It's one of the largest, it's insanity what we have for retail sales. Like Now the question is, is two stories down or two stories up? North, east. So it's two stores to the east. <laughs> so two stores to the east of us is uh, the retail side of thing. Uh, when parts four of the latest F-150 coming out uh, next week, dude. Oh, I mean, who say on. that? It, it, like somebody that doesn't ever. Uh, Dean sells in, yeah, the Z9 was gone, man. I went to oh. high, or, uh, Big D bought that. Um, gone. Have you guys put a sub in a Chevy Blazer with bows? Uh, no. Not, not the, the new, new one. The new one, no. The old ones, yes. Yeah, the new not, one, no. Not the new one, no. Um, the only thing you got to check and see is if it has uh, fake engine noise. And if it does, you just got to bypass it. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, bypass it. card is holding up under the weight pretty good. It's actually holding up really well. And we were trying to figure out how we could get two more power supplies on it. Because we have a total of six. And I just can't figure out a way to do it. I wish I could get one that's a little taller. Um... But, yeah, I mean, the bolts are, you know, what really helped it is, like, we put the plastic on the back, you know, it holds, um, it holds the, uh, all the breakers. So, um, the new power strip we have coming is, is, like, a really long power strip, and it has on-off switches individual for all the outputs. So, we'll be able to, like, the circuit breakers allow us to shut off the output of the power supplies into the system and then with the new power strip we'll be able to turn off power instead of having to worry about these we'll have individual power strip or switches on the back so it'll be it'll be it's nice gonna be, it's gonna be covered for yeah sure. yeah it's it's uh yeah. yeah it's a lot of fun um not really yeah uh, it's not hi fernando hey good afternoon good afternoon, good afternoon. hey you know what today is also today it's Thursday. Today is Thursday. You know you what know that what means? You Thursday? Yeah, I do. What is it? Today means we're going to be, I'm going to be live with Mr. Hi-Fi Vega on the Hi-Fi Vega Network doing reverse polarity and side jag. What are you guys going to talk about? Uh, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about car stereo wise, but I'm sure it'll be a wonderful topic on something. All right, let me show you what you can talk about. Come on over here. Hey, no, we're not. Yeah, okay. You can talk about this sexy eight inch slim two-way component set made by Morel hi fi I was going to say you jumped Ooh. right ahead. Exactly. So, you can talk about this sexy beast. Look at that. Yeah, that is a pretty sexy beast. Right? Yeah. Eight inch, beautiful design. Can't wait to see how it sounds. Like. Yeah, I know. Curve. I've been wanting to hit, I've been wanting to hook them up. Right? Yep, yep. Comes with the tweeter. Comes with everything. Uh, crossovers for the mid base. Crossover for the tweeter. It's beautiful. It is so, beautiful. If you want to see them, you want to check the specifications for this specific speaker. Go to morelhifi.com and you can find all your stuff about yeah. the audio. So this is in the integration section. So these are in the integration section no. if you're looking for them. Yes. Not this one. This one's hard here. Oh, it, you're so mental. Um, uh, I don't think Fernando will ever be, because uh, it's that's prime time kid time. So, uh, Stinger High 10, do I use RCAs or optical for high res tracks? If the device you're going to connect it to has a good... Optical? Optical input with optical... Yeah like gain control, mm -hmm. then by all means, go optical. 
Um, go optical. Yeah. yeah. Sure, it's an output. If you're not, just go RCA. Yeah, you know. Uh, otherwise, yeah, go go RCA because it's. Uh, go with God, my friend. Definitely go with God. I don't think there's another surprise guest. I don't. I don't think Hi-Fi got in touch you with anyone. Have a surprise guest? Yeah, we did last week. Chris. All right. Spiro so when you guys have a surprise guest, do you tell the people who? Like. No, half the time I don't like, even know. Whoa. Yeah. No, whoa, it's who is like, this guy? Yeah, that's more like that. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's good. It's it is fun. Yeah. Uh. Test by Saint. No, no, God, no. These aren't gonna be test by. I don't know what we're gonna do with these. We're gonna find a place to put them because I actually want to hear them. I don't think they'll fit in Haley's car, but. I think that's a six. That's a six, yeah. Yeah, I don't think we can make mm-hmm. those fit. Um, now I just need to get me a BMW. So these aren't actually for BMW. Even though they say BMW in the part number, that's actually the wrong sticker, I believe. And no, it doesn't say BMW. No, it does on the back of the speaker. So the speaker, the model number on the speaker sticker is wrong. These are pre-production. Keep that in mind. These are these are part of the sample packs that came. There's no BMW here. Eh? Yeah, it's what well, no. MW. Yeah. No, it's just MW. Yeah, anyway. It's like uh Alright, well what it's what's it called on the box? The same thing. Is it? No, it's not. It's UNI eighty two. So. UNI Oh they yeah, yeah. Added, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. Anyway, yeah. what does it matter? Uh, it, it's okay. It's okay. The colors off slightly too, but this oh, these man. these are early I early want speakers. Now. It's okay. It's no, I don't really care. Um what's the recommended crossover? Uh morelhifi.com you can find all of it <laughs> honestly i don't know the tweeter typically on that the tweeter that we're using on this will play it out it's 2.2 so 2200 yeah 12 yeah, it's, it's tw- yeah 2200 that's on the tweeter uh, yeah so 20 tw- uh, you know 12 db hour 24 if you want to if you have the capability of it but yeah it'll play down to that's why it works with this eight inches that the tweeter will play down so low six so on the mid warfer uh 56 really yeah, yeah. wow yeah, there you go 56 i uh, love the morel ultra tempo six by nine two-way with the two and a half yes, yes it's a very nice comp nice. very nice it very nice nice yes um sure. will it fit in my car mm, el fernandez what does uh, el fernandez have i think he has a chevy might fit in chevy yeah no new well okay Yes, it'll probably fit in a Chevy. Yeah, yeah I mean, if it's, an, if it's a newer Chevy. Because it has the 6x9 style. If it has the 6x9, so it'll fit. You just have to... You make the... It's, uh, it won't go center. You have to... You have to. It has to be off center a little bit. Because we've done that for... Because, <laughs> yeah. For, for? Yeah, we've done that before. No, for the Chevy. Surprise guest, it's me. Hi, Uncle Bobby B. What's up? They oh, played yeah, a Floyd. 50, have, I think they played... Uh, we did once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think they played down to 56 is what we just read. So yes, that's that's that's, that's very, very low. Damn labels. I know. No we should be labeled. Um, uh, I really enjoy Mary Lou on the live shows. Ooh, Everyone. she's got a uh, she's got an announcement. I think I think Yeah, she but did, she's going to do No, uh, she gets to announce it. We're not Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that it is it hundred percent though? No, I have no idea but this is like, I well, I thought you said it was yes. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I don't know, man. You know, I have no idea. This guy, I, I swear to God. Think, Anyways, we'll we'll let that. you know when we know more. You're so sad. Well, I mean, you told me today, so I'm assuming. Well, I'm was... gonna say yes, but it, like, who knows? I mean, hey, man. She could have a new job. We'll just we'll leave it there. Cut a bigger opening. It's not the opening. It's the door panel that gets in the way. Won't fit in a ramp. No, it won't fit in the ramp. Uh. No, it won't fit in the ramp. Really? Yeah. Because the RAM okay. is that plastic door panel that sticks out. So you, you'd never get it in a RAM. Because there's no room to come out. So it's not going in a RAM. Because it's so slim. It doesn't matter. You're not going to get it in the hole. It's not going in a RAM. Man. I'm telling you. It's, it's, you'd have to... Bring, bring the RAM, bro. No. Bring the RAM and we'll figure it out. No. <laughs> no, don't bring the RAM. We won't figure it out. Um, come on, friend. Spill the beans. Well, no. I, it's her surprise. It's her It's her. Yeah, it's it's exactly. her announcement. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, you sh- Christian, what? Christian, just just chill, bro. You can't try Can when you're. Can you try and you? Th- yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> I'll spoil the surprise. Her and I are getting married. There you go. Um, you have to ram it in the ram. You have to ram it into the ram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, no, just push really hard. It. Just, um, just push really hard. This month, the twenty-four. We're gonna be in Dallas. Here, hold this. 
Oh, wow, why? Wow. Because I, I got to get a drink. Get All right, so, so yes, wow. this month, the 24, we're going to be at Jay's Tent Car Audio Shop in Dallas, Texas. We're going to have so much fun. It's going to be Andy's, Jeff, Brian Mitchell, Dean. Um, Fernando. It's going to be Fernando. It's going to be Oscar, Juan. Uh, it's going to be a lot of people in there. So many cars, so many demos. You can hop in the Tesla and listen to it. It's a full morale system, you know, so it's it's awesome. I mean, honestly, I think the coolest one there is going to be Brian's pickup. Brian's pickup? Yeah, because Brian's pickup only has a two-way in it. Yeah. And it's just amazing what he's managed to Everybody's do. Everybody's invited, man. I don't know if you high five air can make it, but... Everybody's invited. He might, he might, he's gonna, yeah, he might go. He might go? He might go. There you go. If so, knows, that would be cool. Uh, yeah. Everybody's invited. Come in. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. Hang out with the guys. And, uh, you know, do that's stupid it. Stuff. I right. Don't do stupid stuff. Always do stupid stuff. Well, I, choose oh, violence. Choose violence? <laughs> Always choose violence. Why Will Christian be there? Um, I put some, my head is like, dude, I'm, I'm boiling up here. Yeah, so, it's uh, hot. Yeah. We so. should shut we gotta pull that car in. Yes, we should do that. Yeah, go ahead. Knock yourself out. Uh, no what? No fast course. Won't no buy my plane ticket. Right. I mean, no. That was weird. That was weird. That was creepy as hell. Yeah. Mm. Very uh, what bird is making all that noise in the background? Uh, it's probably a, either a seagull or a crow. We, we get both. Uh, I'll bring cooler. I'll bring a cooler full of beer if it's allowed. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. the guys are gonna have something in there. I'm. I don't know. Really? What. Yeah. Wow. That's ballsy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever works for you. Alaskan swallow. Definitely not an Alaskan swallow. Yeah. Um. Dude, you should have seen the dude. seagulls in freaking Vancouver. Oh my God. Yeah. I was they doing were... something, something, something different, man. Sorry. Hi, Paul. What guy? Oh, the guy over there. The... Oh, we yeah. can go measure? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they're... anyways. Uh, all right, so we got to cut it off right here. I apologize. We have to go. We're, we're getting... Do some measurements. We have to do some measurements, and we'll tell you more about it maybe yeah. next week. Yeah. Um, soon. 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 It's, yeah. Don't forget, this show is brought to you by morelhifi.com and Morel underscore America here on Instagram. Bye, guys. Yep. All right. We'll see you guys tonight.